The uh, matter before the court, reverse Batson, however you want to describe it. Um, the uh, court, when this type of motion is brought before it, is asked to do uh, really two things, make two primary findings. Um, the first of which uh, this court has found that there appears to be uh, intentional uh, discrimination in the panel. Uh, that's that prima facie case. Uh, and I guess before I get into this, um, one of the challenges that I think uh, counsel recognize in this case is the, the racial overtones in the case. And um, those can't, uh, at least here, without the, the jury present, uh, based on the questioning, we have not been able to escape those discussions with the panel, and, and they've just come up in a lot of different contexts. So. You know, this is sort of a continuation of a conversation that I think will continue for a long time with respect to this case uh, and maybe um, many others. Um, and so we start getting into this question about race. And again, uh, quite a few African-American jurors were excused through preemptory strikes exercised by the defense. But that doesn't mean that the court has the the authority to reseat um, simply again because there's this prima facie case because we see it it's sort of one of those it's not one of those we see it therefore it is there's now additional steps the court needs to engage in one of those steps is the exercise we just went through which is going through those particular strikes and um, hearing from the the defendants in this particular case on a reverse Batson on why those strikes were exercised and then based on all of that the uh, court is um, in a position where it's got to make another finding, which is that the defendants are not genuine when they gave a reason, um, and that the reason they were claiming is not the real reason those particular jurors were struck. Batson is, is very limited in what it actually provides the court with as far as an instrument, uh, because, at least in the state of Georgia, the court if it hears a legitimate, non-discriminatory, clear, reasonably specific, and related reason, and reason related to the case, um, that is usually enough to get the court to a finding uh, in this third phase where the, the panelist doesn't need to be um, reseated. There are other states that have a different approach, actually get much more specific. Uh, i point to Washington as one of those states that's looked at Batson and recognized the limitations it places on the court. Uh, but effectively what the court's being asked to do here is determine whether or not the defense is not being genuine with respect to these strikes. And there's all sorts of case law out there, including case law about whether or not you're treating, uh, in this case it would be uh, African-American uh, potential panelists versus Caucasian, um, how specific the questions have to be and how closely related they are. And I'll tell you, in this particular case, Batson's limitations, I think, are clearly out there. In this particular case, there are these significant overtones of race to begin with. And then we have numerous additional preemptory strikes. We're not just limited to the ones that statutorily sit out there. And then we have extensive questioning of each of the panelists, which start differentiating everybody for different reasons based on answers that are given. Because of that, it becomes very difficult for the court to start working through this problem of, are these really genuine reasons that are out there? And it, it gets to the point that I think was raised actually in the Batson decision. I wrote it down. It's uh, Justice Marshall and his concurrence talking about Batson and he said specifically the decision today will not end racial the racial discrimination that preemptories inject into the jury selection process and the reason he said that was because his view of it was that uh, preemptories uh, just give the parties the opportunity to place the court and the system into this uh, this balancing of race versus legitimate purpose um, and again, this case makes it difficult because race is, has been injected into this process and we have a significant number of preemptories. All that's to say, 
I've worked through each one of these. Um, I've listened to the defense. Again, in the state of Georgia, all the defense needs to do is provide that legitimate, non-discriminatory, clear, reasonably specific, and related reason. Um, I have very uh, adept counsel here, and they've been able to explain to the court why, separate from race, those individuals were, in fact, struck from the panel. It does not change the fact that that initial finding was out there. It doesn't feel like that is how it worked, but it's been explained to the court under the terms of Batson why those particular strikes were made. And the court is not going to place upon uh, the defendants of finding that they are being disingenuous to the court or otherwise are not being truthful with the court when it comes to their reasons for striking these jurors. So because of that and because of, again, the limitations I think Batson places upon this court's analysis, I'm denying the motion.